That's going to be a key issue is the quality of infrastructure and mobile coverage in this electorate for our um, growers in the grain fields. But Mildura is the big city, if you like, in this electorate. And a lot of the focus, I think, will be on irrigation, irrigated horticulture, uh, and of course, therefore, what happens with the Murray-Darling Basin plan, uh, with the commitments of extra water to go to South Australia, the reactions to that, and the agricultural visa, the horticultural workforce, the pickers that are needed to get the fruit off of the vines or the trees. Uh, uh, Labor is going in a direction that I think a lot of people won't be happy about in that electorate. But uh, the question is, well, which way will voters go? Will they say, look, we'll let the nationals keep fighting for us on this, or were they, were they rather an independent voice? Well, here on The Morning Show, we have a look uh, each day at a federal electoral issue. Today, I have Ricky Lambert with me from the Flow News 24 desk. How are you, Ricky? Great. Thanks, Wayne. We're having a look at the seat of Mallee, and uh, Sophie Baldwin is a pretty high-profile candidate as an independent, taking on Dr Anne Webster, who is the sitting member from the Nationals, in a seat that's been held by the Nationals for about 74 years. So it's going to be a pretty hard task for a independent to come in and unseed the Nationals. But there has been uh, in regional Australia an appetite for independence. How do you see this uh, campaign unfolding? Well, point of trivia, after the last federal election, Mallee had more candidates than any other seat, even those ones trying to knock off Tony Abbott in Warringah, which was successful. There was more candidates in that seat than anywhere else, partly because the National Ann Webster was running for the first time, which meant under the coalition agreement, the Liberals also had the licence to run as well. They won't run this time because she's a sitting MP, uh, but there was a fascinating little interplay that happened on Friday uh, that I might be asking Ann Webster about for tomorrow's program, where they announced three quarters of a billion dollars, the Liberals, uh, for a hospital at Mildura, but there were no nationals present at the announcement at all. So a little bit of funny stuff happening with the November state election overlapping what's happening with the May election campaign. This time around, Ann Webster, we've checked with Labor, as yet no candidate for the seat. Uh, so it looks like the independents, Sophie Baldwin, certainly get a lot of coverage, but also Horsham councillor Claudia Haynell is another independent running in the seat. They seem to be the three attracting the most attention at this stage. And I think the way it's looking, it'll come down to a two-party preferred between Webster and Baldwin. All right. The three ladies having a battle it out in the seat of Mallee. What are the key issues, uh, do you think, uh, given your discussions with uh, Ann Webster and Sophie Baldwin and in the preface for this report. What do you see as the key issues in the seat of Mallee? Well, uh, as Sophie Baldwin said in this full interview is up on the Flow News 24 podcast, uh, the crumbling infrastructure in Mallee. I mean, even Anne Webster, by her own admission on our uh, previous interview, said she's got a long wish list of things she still wants to improve in Mallee. Uh, The roads have been belted by a particularly freight. It's great that there's a lot of freight, a lot of grain coming off uh, and other crops in the electorate of Mallee. But uh, the Murray Basin Rail project, in fact, is something that I asked Sophie Baldwin about the independent candidate, uh, because you see the Hellsgate Dam, for instance, in Townsville, the National Party committing $5.1 billion to make that state responsibility a reality. Why wouldn't the Nationals be promising or any party be promising that to fully fund the Murray Basin Rail? Here's what she had to say. That's right. I mean, people are sick of, oh, that's a state issue, that's a federal issue. You know, at the end of the day, we, we have a have an electorate here that, that, that needs a connected rail system, not only for freight but also for passenger. I mean, we've, this is community-building infrastructure and nation-building infrastructure. This is something that can, you know, joins Mallee up to the rest of the country. It's uh, long been a project that uh, both the state government and the federal government have invested into. I think $600 million at the moment, but it's still not complete and there's still a lot of the track that still has to be relayed. And some are saying that the problem is that uh, they're using money which is upgrade for maintenance uh, because it's taken so long. Yeah, well, um, that's going to be a key issue is the quality of infrastructure and mobile coverage in this electorate for our um, growers in the grain fields. But Mildura is the big city, if you like, in this electorate. And a lot of the focus, I think, will be on irrigation, irrigated horticulture, uh, and of course, therefore, what happens with the Murray-Darling Basin plan, uh, with the commitments of extra water to go to South Australia, the reactions to that, and the agricultural visa, the horticultural workforce, the pickers that are needed to get the fruit off of the vines or the trees. Uh, there's uh, Labor is going in a direction that I think a lot of people won't be happy about in that electorate. But uh, the question is, well, which way will voters go? Will they say, look, we'll let the Nationals keep fighting for us on this, or will 
together, would they rather an independent voice? On your podcast, you make mention that Sophie Baldwin highlights that in the uh, council area of Loddon that there are no childcare facilities there in any way, shape or form. Is this something that uh, the country electorates, the more sprawling ones, are starting to look further at? Are these more city orientated issues of the past becoming issues that country people are, are really uh, concerned about? Well, I did ask Sophie Baldwin actually in the first part of our most recent interview why she's chosen pink as her campaign colour. It's a definite point of difference with the green of the nationals and often the blue you see from coalition MPs. But I think that shows that they're looking for a more caring, family oriented, uh, you know, women oriented vote uh, when it comes to those um, bread and butter issues when it comes to health and childcare and education. So it'll be interesting to see what they roll out, but they're certainly a very energetic team. All right. Well, she is the uh, wife, mum. Uh, she's uh, been a single mum, a dairy farmer, a journalist, a CEO and a water advocate. And she's worked in retail. She's waitressed at times and held down three jobs. She says she's not afraid of work. Uh, she says, I don't have all the answers, but many of you do. I'll listen and together we can make Mally prosper. Can she do so any more than the Nationals have? Well, I guess time will tell.